Welcome to the hit show, Love Living Radio. Ignite your whole being with Emily Perkins on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Do you love your life? Are you truly free in being your authentic self? In a stress-filled world full of distractions, Love Living Radio is a space to explore how mindful presence can steer you toward an ignited life. What does a life you really love look like? Emily shares her innermost vulnerabilities and breaks down barriers through conversations about sex and relationships, the magic of plant medicine, and so much more in order to share the power of living your life with love and loving the life you live. Now, here's your host. Hi, everybody. Oh, happy Wednesday evening. Um, I'm so excited to be with you guys tonight. I feel like it's been a long time. I don't know why. I know it's only been two weeks, but for whatever reason, these past two weeks just kind of felt like they went, you know, slower. Um, I think it's because so much has happened in my life in the past two weeks, just a lot of really big decisions and big um, plans for the 2019 coming year. Uh, Some really, really exciting stuff that I can't wait to share with you guys in the future. But um, I'm excited to talk about what we're talking about today. And for those of you who are tuning in for the first time, this is Love Living Radio and I am Emily Perkins. And the thing that I am like crazy, crazy passionate about, the reason why I'm doing this radio show is because I absolutely love connecting people to themselves in every possible way. Uh, It is literally what lights my fire. Um, So what I do uh, (laughs) physically for that is um, I am a licensed esthetician, which is where I started in holistic beauty. Um, I am also a Reiki master and a holistic life coach. Um, And in all of those ways, essentially what I do is just love people. I love people so much and in a way that allows them to see how absolutely gorgeous they are and how spectacular they are. Um, And it is an incredible honor, truly, to do all three Um, I love it. I like really love it. (laughs) Um, So that's who I am, just in case you're tuning in for the first time. And if you are tuning in for the first time, thanks. It's so nice to have you. Uh, (laughs) This show is just kind of like this really beautiful space for me to just get to connect, which is so perfect because that's what we're talking about today, connection. Um, And in alignment with that, Say hello to Mulligan, my little soul buddy. Um, He really wanted to be a part of the show today. Um, All about connection. So he's literally physically connected to me right now, which I love. Um, So welcome. Welcome. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, It really means a lot to be able to share this space with you and to be able to hopefully offer something, anything, even if it's just knowing that in this moment you are connected to someone else, Um, me and you. And, you know, connection is, it's such a powerful thing. It's such a big thing. And looking back at all of my previous shows, which to be totally honest, I was actually really shocked and um, excited about the fact that we've been on air for six months, six months and 12 shows uh, of so much fun. You know, like if anything, if I look back at those six months, I, I just see so much fun, so much fun. And honestly, some some really good stuff. Like there's actually <laughs> some pretty um, awesome info and connection um, in these 12 episodes that are up and running on my website. If you're looking for them at lovelivingholistics.com or also through transformationtalkradio.com. Um But looking at the lineup, like looking at all of the different episodes and all of the things that we've covered, it made so much sense that this episode would be about connection because every episode, you know, if you're wondering how the process works or how my process works in terms of choosing what I want to talk about, um, most of the time it's really intuitive. You know, like it just aligns that um, I'm like, oh, you know what? I, I kind of want to have 
my friend Ryan on. Um, and he's like, yeah, let's do this date and it just lines. Or um, I'm like, oh, it'd be really fun to do one on CBD. So um, I reach out to my friend Asa and she's like, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> um, everything has just been very fluid, very fluid and very in alignment and very intuitive. And each big theme, like every time I do a show by myself, um, these themes just kind of come up you know, they just start showing up everywhere in my life. And that first big theme that we talked about a, a few weeks ago was trust. And trust in myself, trust in others, trust in and looking at the ways in which we don't trust um, and the beliefs that we have that get in the way of trust. And that really kind of effortlessly led me into seeing the newest um, theme, which was connection. And it feels so powerful and so potent for where we are right now. You know, like there's just so much going on in the world. There's so much fear and so much distrust, so much disconnection. You know, like we're just, there's so much uh, uneasiness with with the state of the world, um, with reason, you know, there's a lot happening. There's a lot happening both personally for people and globally and just the, the structure of our country, the structure of how we live life, um, our basic rights. Um, it's really, it's really, I think an important conversation to be having right now, connection, in a, in a time where a lot of us are probably feeling really disconnected, you know, disconnected from ourselves um, and probably a little bit swimming in fear for some people and disconnected from other people because they may have different views or uh, it just feels hopeless. You know, I've so many times over the past couple of weeks from friends, from family, from clients, I've basically heard the words, what's the point? What's the point? You know, what's the point in voting? What's the point in cleaning the house when it's just going to get dirty again? What's the point in loving harder and bigger when we may get hurt? You know, like so many times I've heard over the past couple of weeks, what's the point? And <sighs> connection is is what I came up with. It may, be, may not be your answer, but it, it, it has resoundingly been my answer just in what's shown up in my life, in uh, the themes and the messages and the lessons and the rep you know the repetition. That's how Source, God, Universe, our higher selves, you know, whatever it is you believe in, kind of sends us those messages, those repetitive words, those repetitive um, signs, messages from friends or from a TV show that you're watching or from. Um, a meditation, well, however it shows up, the repetition is like the universe slash your higher self being like, bink, 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 hey, look at me. <laughs> and we get to choose whether or not we, you know, we pay attention to that. So uh, it's just, it's so fascinating. It really is so fascinating to look at all of the ways that we, create disconnect. You know, like as humans, as people in this world, um, connection oftentimes feels really vulnerable. It feels scary to be deeply connected to people because I think in that, there, it feels like there's a lot at stake. You know, our hearts are at stake. Our our jobs sometimes we feel like are at stake. And we and a lot of the time we make it mean this. We make it mean that our hearts and our well-being and our life ultimately, like that's the ultimate fear, right? That our life is in jeopardy. That's what our survivor self is constantly protecting us from, from death, essentially. Um, which our sweet, poor little survivor self <laughs> thinks that we're in danger all the time. Um when in fact, our higher self and our healthy self knows better. So in looking at connection and looking at all the ways that I personally, you know, um, create disconnect in my life or ways in which I 
shy away from connection. And it's been really, really profound and powerful. Um, I've been looking at it for years, but for whatever reason, the past two years, two months, um, it's just been really prevalent. And it really kind of slapped me in the face about a month ago when I was at another core leadership um, training, which I've talked about in the past. Core is just, oh God, this just miraculous, miraculous transformative program that offers workshops. Um, coreexperience.com. If you're interested, it is pure magic. Anyway, I'm doing a leadership program with them. And at our last module, I had this experience with another teammate who is a dear friend who I absolutely love and adore that just rocked me. It, I mean, on, it rocked me, but also opened my eyes in the most beautiful and profound way. So we were in um, a process and he and I and another and another participant, and I got super, super triggered, like really triggered by something. So much so that I like couldn't quite tune in to my healthy self. And I was starting to go into what's called a trauma vortex, which is where you kind of like almost start to leave the presencing of your body. You start to lose your presence. Like I can't make con eye contact. And um, I'm constantly like rubbing my, my legs or grounding myself to try and stay um, in my body instead of swirling out into the vortex. Um, and it's happened to me before. Um, so I knew it and I kind of was able to regulate it. But in the process, what I realized that when I get triggered like that or just triggered in general, where I go is I disconnect. And I disconnect in such a way that I, I am almost like not even there. I'm not even there with that person in that moment. I, I cannot look at them. Um, they can't reach me. They cannot reach me. I'm literally like in a dungeon in a cave in my chest, in my heart. And this happened in this process. And what happened after that was so eye-opening to me. Um, my One of my friends, my teammates, my um, dear, dear friend who I absolutely adore, a man, um, he watched this happen. He sat there and he was holding my feet and he watched it happen as I disconnected. And I honestly, I disconnected from myself. I disconnected from anybody else in the room and I couldn't, I couldn't be reached. You know, like it was literally like a cutoff. And his reaction to this was incredibly emotional. Like it was a huge emotional release and um, triggered something really deeply for him also. Um, and he was crying and was amazingly generous to allow, you know, us to kind of go through a process with him. But I sat there realizing that when I disconnect like that, when I can't be, when I can't be reached and when I just disconnect myself from the people that I love, it profoundly impacts them. It really does. Like watching his tears was one that honestly, truly brought me back to my marriage it did because I, I saw all the times that I did that in fights. When I got triggered, I would just disappear. I was no longer there. He may have walked out, out of the room, which triggered the hell out of me, <laughs> but I, I disconnected emotionally. I just wasn't there. And I saw firsthand in this workshop with this one dear friend just how detrimental that is to the other person and ultimately to our connection. And that the thing that I really want is to be deeply and intimately connected, to be loved and supported in that moment when I'm getting triggered. But my survivor self, that defense was like, that's what I do. I go, whoop, and I'm, I'm out, you know, like nobody's home. So seeing that, seeing how profound it was, you know, it was like a, a drastic um, example of something that happens on a smaller scale all the time for me, you know, like, and I know it's not just me, which is why I'm saying it. When you get triggered, when you feel sad, when you feel depressed or lonely or overworked or hurt by somebody, what do you do? How do you disconnect? What happens for you? 
you know, if you, if your feelings get hurt by someone, where do you go? Do you retreat and just kind of back off and, and, and go into your own head and, and disconnect from the relationship and disengage? Or do you stay present? Do you stay present with them? Do you stay present with where you're at and what's happening and stay present to the love, right? Stay present to the love and the, and the, and the possibility. And obviously, you know, easier said than done sometimes. Um, but it's such an interesting place to look because it is such a common place that we get disempowered. You know, and it comes from a belief, like for me, it comes from a belief that, you know, and we all have, you know, a relationship to connection. You know, we have a relationship to everything. So my relationship to connection from my survivor self, from the part of me that's trying to defend all the time, is that connection is a burden. That being connected to a lot of people all the time, as I am, as a healer and a coach and, and having my hands on people and just my life. It's just a part of who I am. But for my survivor self, when I'm triggered, when I'm in my stuff, which usually happens when I'm really tired or I don't take care of myself, note to self, take care of yourself so that you don't get triggered <laughs> into your survivor self. Um, but when I go there, connection is a burden. You know, like it's, it, I just like, oh, I don't have enough love. I don't have enough energy. I don't have enough time for everybody. Um, and I get into this place where it's like connection is just like, it's, it's heavy. And I, I also get into this victim-y place where I'm like, well, okay, who's taking care of me? Who's loving me? Like I have, oh God, I have all this energy going out all the time and then I'm taking care of everybody. Who's taking care of me? You know, that's what my survivor self says. And in that, I disconnect. I go into my own space and I get kind of victim-y and I do that whole separate and alone thing, which is so uh, common. We all do it. You know, it, it's at some point when we're young, we go from feeling connected to ourselves, to our parents, to source, you know, we walk into the world completely connected and dependent, to be honest. As babies, we are totally dependent and therefore connected. And at some point, we feel separate. We feel separate from source. We feel separate from those around us and the rest of the world. We're all of a sudden these autonomous beings, right? And in that, we we create all these beliefs and all these defenses around connection, whether it's connections a burden. So, you know, I can't be deeply connected all the time because I just, you know, it's too hard. It's too heavy. Or another big one that came up for me was uh, with my coach last week. I have a new coach who I love. She's amazing. Like absolutely freaking amazing. Stacy, you're just awesome. Um, I've been waiting to work with her for two years and it's just been like, coaches always find me really intuitively or I find them intuitively. And I've had some incredible coaches in my life. Um, but Stacy and I were talking the other day and this one core belief that comes up for me every time I'm ready to up level, which means every time that my energy is ready to kind of up, up itself into a new vibration, which shows up as... Um, uh, a new awareness within myself or a new, a new relationship that I create with myself or, you know, like every time you up level into a new energy, it shows up everywhere in your life. Right. So I'm up leveling into new relationship with myself. I'm up leveling into um, a different level of my practice and my business. That's where it shows up so powerfully when I up level. Um, so I knew I was ready to up level. And the last time that this, belief came up was right before I was ready to up level into taking on a more clients into taking on a, a heavier schedule and the belief that stops me in up leveling almost every time is I don't have enough energy I don't have enough energy to be connected 
to that many people. Ooh. So that's what stops me from growing, right? That's what stops me from having a, a, a huge expansive network, you know, from, from what my 2019 goal is going global. You know, if I want to go global, that means I'm going to be connected to like hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people. Do I have the energy for that? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so realizing this belief um, and realizing how it stops me from connection, that I don't have enough energy. I don't have enough energy to be connected to so many people. I don't have enough energy to give to everybody. I don't have enough energy to uh, have my hands on so many people. You know, that was another belief that I'm only powerful when I'm in person with people. Not true. Not true. Energy crosses time and space, <laughs> which I know as a Reiki master. Um, but it was just so profound to have this awareness around my connection or my understanding of my own energy and how I relate to connection. You know, it makes sense to be honest, as an empath and someone that takes on the energy around me, that connection, being connected to another person and their energy might feel like a burden. You know, like it makes sense why that belief is there, but it disempowers everything. It disempowers my ability to grow my business in a massively expansive way, which I'm so pumped and ready for. It, and it's not even my business, it's about connecting to people. You know, like this radio show is is one of those examples. It was an up level in my energy about me getting ready to start connecting with more people because I do have the energy because connection is a resource, not a depletion. You know, that's the belief ultimately, right? That connection is depleting rather than resourcing whether that's a friendship or a family or work or clients or myself, you know, like all of these ways that we connect, it's always about connection. You know, I, I looked at all of the, the different titles of my shows, you know, food, CBD, trust, sisterhood, loving your body, love addiction, plant medicine, sexploration, all of those topics are also about connection. How do you connect to your body? How, can you, how do you connect to your sexuality? How do you connect to food? How do you connect to um, medicine and things that can nourish you? It's all about connection. Plants are connection. How are we connected to the earth? Like, wow, it's all about connection. And if it's all about connection, how can you be powerful in that, right? How can you be powerful in connection? How can it resource every single part of your life? Mm. And in order to look at that, you have to look at all the ways that you disempower connection, all the ways that you disconnect, all the ways that you block connection, right? Because we do it. We all do it. For me, connection is a burden. Or um, I don't have enough energy to be connected to so many people or to call that person back or to call my cousin who I love so much who lives in Aspen who I never get to see. Um, but my silly little blocks around connection just get in the way. I don't have enough time. I don't have enough. Um, I'm too tired at the end of the day. Blah, blah, blah. It's all excuses and just blocks for connection. And you know what? That That's not to say that sometimes those things will be real and that I'm wrong for thinking that or you're wrong. That's not what we're talking about. We're just taking a really good look through the lens of accountability and honesty at all the ways that block you from the thing that actually can bring magic into your life that can resource you and support you and let you know that you're not alone. You're not alone. That's why I do this show. That's why I talk about the crazy vulnerable things that I talk about. 
to let you know that you're not alone, that we're all struggling with essentially the same core things, just different flavors. And there's something about this topic too, about connection that feels really important to talk about right now. And we'll get more into this after the break. Um, and we also <laughs> we also have the space to take a caller after the break. So I wanted to be able to just kind of like chat about connection, get the foundation, and then open it up to connection. Um, so we have the space after the break to, to have a caller. And if you're wondering how to do that, you can dial in at one 800 930 2819 on any phone um, and get supported. Come and talk to me about this. Connect. You know, like, don't be scared. Don't let that fear stop you from getting supported in this moment. Don't let it stop you from connecting with another human and maybe walking away with something brilliant. That's what we're here for. We are here on this planet to connect. We're not meant to live life alone. We're not meant to struggle alone. We're not meant to sit in a corner or sink into that hole in your chest. You know, we're meant to connect. That's why we're here. And it is a beautiful gift. It's a beautiful gift in our humanity and in our life as humans to be able to connect. And there's so much strength and power, right? Strength in numbers. There's a reason why they say that. So if you want to call in, that number again is 1-800-930-2819. I would love to talk to you. I would. I would really love to talk to you. So um, give us a call. We're going to take a little break. And when we come back, hopefully we'll chat about connection. I am Emily Perkins, and you are listening to Love Living Radio on Transformation Talk Radio. And just so that you get a little second peek at this cuteness, Mulligan and I are streaming live from Newport, Rhode Island tonight um, from our living room. <laughs> and we're talking about connection. And so far we've chatted... Um, probably wasn't proper English. We've talked about <laughs> um, connection in all sorts of ways. The ways in which we disempower it, the ways in which we block it, the ways in which we run from it. Um, I shared a little bit about how it happens for me. You know, connection is a burden from my survivor self and I don't have enough energy and uh, it's vulnerable, you know? It feels vulnerable to be deeply connected to people. And honestly, it takes a whole lot of courage. It takes a really big, beautiful, open heart to connect deeply with people. And I think some of the ways in which we stop that connection from happening come from a belief or lots of beliefs. You know, we all have different ones, but I think some of them are things like, um, someone's going to hurt me. You know, like if we look at, I, just looking at all of my past shows, every single one of them is ultimately about connection. You know, like connection to the body, connection to your sexuality, plant medicine, um, everything. We won't, you know, that's what we talked about a little bit before the break. But um, looking at that, I think some of the ways in which we, protect ourselves from connection, which if you, if you think about that, like we're protecting ourselves from connection. What? Why? And that's, you know, that's where the, the beliefs come in. That's where the fears come in. But if you think about it like that, we're protecting ourselves from connection, this resourcing, powerful, um, magical thing that we have the gift of being able to do as humans to connect. 
on an emotional, mental, physical level. You know, like connection and intimacy is such a beautiful gift as a human to experience intimacy the way that we do, to connect with another human being. It is absolutely miraculous to connect and uh, to be able to experience each other in ways that um, is just so layered and multidimensional. You know, like it, it, it is just such a beautiful gift, connection. And so if you're out there listening, um, maybe think about all the ways that you block connection. What happens for you? You know, like maybe what happens for you when you're in a romantic relationship and you feel disconnected from your partner? Where do you go? Or when you're in friendships, like I just had this happen to me with one of my best friends who's not around here. She's in Florida and I don't get to talk to her that much. And, you know, we've just kind of been in ships in the night and um, missing each other. And what happens for you in relationship when you feel disconnected and how do you, how do you deal with that? You know, like how do you deal with connection? So it sounded like Aggie was talking a little bit about connection with a friend, um, and source. So like how, how, you know, channeling divine source energy, channeling and connecting to your guides or your higher power and, um, and, using that to kind of support you in your relationships, whether it's with a friend or a lover or a family member. Um, and it's such a great question because I think so much of the time we believe that we are disconnected, you know, that, that separate and alone feeling that we are somehow disconnected from source, disconnected from our friends, disconnected from family. Um, and I think the thing that is so powerful that uh, another master coach actually said to me when I first started practicing was that we are never disconnected. We are actually always connected. And that resonated so much with me because it, it was such an eye-opening thing. Like how often do we say, God, I just feel really disconnected. I feel disconnected from my body. I feel disconnected from my partner, I feel disconnected from um, all of my friends, especially in the winter when we all hibernate. Um, and I guess too, in thinking about it energetically, you know, whether it's source or our relationships in life, we are never actually disconnected. We are never alone. We're never not connected to each other, to each other's energy, to the love that we have for one another, to the love that we have for ourselves and source, you know? And I think remembering that we actually always have the ability to connect simply through choosing, through our consciousness, by just realizing that we're never not connected, we are connected. <laughs> so I think that you know, that's kind of an um, invaluable thing to remember when we're struggling with the fears that we have around connection, that we're never not connected, that we're never not loved and supported by grace, source, God, universe, the divine. We are never not completely held and that in that connection, that especially that particular one, God, it's just so <laughs> juicy and powerful and sinks you right down into the soul of who you are. At least that's what it does for me. You know, that connection to something greater than myself, which for me is just love. That's, you know, it's just an energy. It is an energy that I relate to as love. Um, and, you know, this is Love Living Radio, so it kind of perfectly <laughs> supports what it is we're doing here, here on Love Living Radio. Um, and I can't think of anything more in alignment with love than connection. When, especially when we use it powerfully, 
when we're in alignment with it, you know, um, it's just so, it's so beautiful, you know, and I think a lot of the time when we do feel alone and separate and disconnected, it's some belief that, you know, some belief that we're alone in this world, that we have to do it alone, that we have to figure it out, that the only piece, uh, the only person we can rely on is ourselves, you know, that, um, that people aren't genuinely there to love and support us, that they don't want to do that. And I think that's where some of the disconnect happens. These beliefs that, that we're alone, that we aren't surrounded by love and connected all the time, that, uh, that the people that are in our lives aren't also loving and searching for that connection, desiring that connection, you know? And I think when we sink into that, you know, when we sink into the essence of connection, which is really love, which is kind of the essence of everything, (laughs) in my humble opinion, then we realize that connection is this incredible tool. It's an incredible tool for living your life powerfully, for living, and not even powerfully, but just in, in a way that you actually really want to. You know, like it's there for you to support you, whether it's connection to your own brilliant beating heart or connection to your intuition, connection to deep and meaningful and intimate connection with the people in your life, lovers, friends, family. What would life look like if you actually fully embraced the power of connection? If you allowed the defenses and the beliefs, the fear, around what it means to be really, truly, deeply connected to other human beings, to just kind of melt away. What happens? What happens to your life? What does it look like? Through real, true, vulnerable, intimate connection. Mm. Personally, I can tell you that it is probably one of the most resourcing things I know. And, and you know what? I love time to myself. I do. I love spending time with me and doing yummy resourcing things for myself, like taking a bath or going for a walk or having a yummy meal or watching Netflix sometimes. Like I love, I love spending time with myself, but I've found in challenging my own limited beliefs around connection, you know, that it's a burden, that I don't have enough energy, that I, you know, it has to be this outward thing all the time, that I have to put effort into it, that it has to be, you know, that it's hard um, putting, you know, you have to put effort into connection. All these funny little things that we (laughs) make connection mean that just get in the way of it actually being something resourcing for us, right? Because that's what it's really there for. So in realizing that, in realizing that it's meant to be a resource for me, it meant to be a tool for me, I realized that connection to other people can be this incredible uh, filling of my own cup. You know, and I, I've seen that happen so many times, especially, you know, it was hardest for me around my relationship with men to allow that connection to be really vulnerable and intimate, even if it's not sexually intimate, just like heart-wise intimate, vulnerably intimate with some of just the most wonderful men in the world. And I'm just so present to how opening the doors of connection and letting go of some of the limiting beliefs that I have and fear that I have Um, which took some digging, you know, like some of this is not always present. You have to actually look at it. And once I did, I was like, wow, okay, this is keeping me from, from just 
beautiful friendship. It's keeping me from um, being just divinely loved by a man, just really beautifully loved. And um, I've been lucky enough to experience that a lot over the past couple of months with different relationships, whether intimate or friendship. Um, and I completely attribute that to letting some of the guard down around what I have, all the stuff I have around connection. So we have a couple of minutes and it looks like um, Aggie's back on. So we're going to take her call and we're going to chat with her just for a few minutes before we leave. But I wanted to make sure that uh, we open up that connection again. So Rob, do we have her on the line? Aggie, are you still there? Yep. Awesome. You're on with Emily Perkins. Okay. So sorry about our last connection, but I'm on a different phone. It seems to be working better. Can you hear me? We can hear you. So we just have okay. a couple of minutes. We only have about five minutes, okay. but um, okay. what would you like to ask? All right. Well, so I guess the, I started to ask. So my job involves connection with people. So I, when I'm teaching and I'm working with my clients and classes, I'm connected uh, fully, wholeheartedly, and uh, probably... I'm the most present in my life that I that I can be, and then I leave the space, and then I I feel as though I almost need a break from connection, but then uh, you know just sometimes just a little break, and sometimes just to decompress and not be pouring out my um, you know all my resources sort of sort of need to recharge, and then I want connection again, but sometimes when I I'm I'm looking for just certain connections, people who who will jive with me, who are easy to be with with me, and uh, typically with my family are um, some of my childhood quote one of my most treasured childhood friends. But it's funny how I have had kind of this combative um, connection with other friends other than those people I mentioned. So I'm trying to come to peace with it. I'm trying to, you know, source, as I said, the divine spirit and energy to sort of uh, process it and figure it out and, 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 and either to, 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 to basically decide, is it worth my energy to actually put in to connect or is it just let it go and leave it alone? So there's my question. Sorry. Mm. Yeah, to either put the effort in to connect or to leave it alone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, what do you think is causing the disconnect? Mm -hmm. I'm not exactly sure. I can't really put my finger on it other than uh, the, the need of that. Of, of, well, it always seems to come down to who's right and who's wrong or... Uh, you know, it's almost like, it seems as though it's like a competition. So who has the, the most information on something or who has the correct information? And so, I don't know. Um, or or it's just an invasion of my space. You know, someone's, you know, I hosted a lot of people this summer uh, for various celebrations and it was all good, but it also... It's tiring. It takes away from my time with me and my time with my husband. So maybe I'm, it's a resentful thing. Maybe it's a resentment. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I definitely think that there is resentment in there for sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah. But, um, yeah. Resentment and connection. So, most of it. Sorry. So, so it sounds like you said that there there's some resentment in connection. Mm. Mm -hmm. in needing to be connected. Yeah. Well, resentment of, of the people that were taking away from from my connection to my husband and, I don't know, maybe just draining me. And maybe that's, that's, you know, that's probably a, a bit of it. That I used to be so, you know, I used to have the energy to entertain more and connect more. And now it's almost like it's a nice... I enjoy this. I enjoy solitude, 
but is it is it the right thing? Mm. Well, it sounds like maybe a place to look is that connection is draining, you know, mm -hmm. and maybe that's the place to look, whether it's with your friends and or certain friends or when you're hosting, you know, it sounds like part of the belief is that connection is draining and then that's how it shows up or that's how it feels. Mm -hmm. So what happens yeah. if connection is resourcing? What does it look like then? Um, it looks it looks better for sure, but I have to try to figure out, I guess, a way to uh, to do that. And I guess part of it is is letting go of perfection, letting go of having everything be just perfect and just so. And uh, I guess that's a big one. And you know, so I guess there's a, there's several layers in here. Yeah, there usually is, especially with connection. It's it's definitely, mm -hmm. I think, has multiple stories that kind of weave through it that we mm -hmm. don't realize might be playing yeah. out. I think also it's been very evident to me what's really come out of it is that I'm way better off one-on-one, -on -one, that I like connecting much more instead of big crowds, which I used to love and think it was so much fun and such a party and a blast. So for me, it's much more about just having one-on-one -on -one or one-on-two or just small group settings. It's really big. That's maybe the thing right there. There's the answer. Just smaller groups connecting. And if I have the, have the, have the larger group, then just find the one person that I really want to, you know, talk to, converse with, catch up with. It's always hard when you're the hostess because then you, you always have to run off and just prepare things or clean up from things or things like that. So that's, that's, that's a challenge, but, mm -hmm. um, but I think that maybe the answer is, um, just as you said it, but, um, sort, well, you know, find the, uh, the, um, fine tune, the fine tune the connections, mm -hmm. you know, to, to, to what I what what suits what suits me at this time in my life, mm -hmm. which is smaller groups, one on one, just you know. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hear that fine tuning the connection. Yeah, mm -hmm. and journaling I think is really helping about it. Trying to, yeah. Mm. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for calling. Thank you for sharing. And okay. For connecting. We so appreciate okay. it. Thank yep. you. Thank you. Okay, bye. <laughs> Have an awesome night. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Take care. Bye. <laughs> oh, well, I'm just, I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful for that connection, you know, because I think it's actually something that we all struggle with, you know, like how do we, find ways to fine tune our connection, to feel powerful, to have it be something that is resourcing for us rather than depleting and finding um, how that might look specifically just for you. Um, and I'd also like the coach in me also would have you challenge, challenge your own beliefs that limit your energy, that limit the ways in which you connect because the possibility, the potential is endless connection, endless. And in that it takes a little bit of um, <laughs> what I, what I, you know, one of the things that I see in it is that it takes a little bit of unconditional love in seeing that all humans are essentially good and really truly you know kind of like sinking into that as a way of allowing connection with everyone to trust that you can connect with everyone you know that's another big thing that I've been talking about with people is trust so oh I'm so grateful for this connection with you all tonight I hope that you got something from it um I'm so excited to have our first caller thank you Aggie and 
Um, I hope to connect with you all next time. Um, until then, I wish you so much love in your life. If you're looking to connect, go to www.lovelivingholistics.com. Thank you so much and have a great night. Thank you for listening to Love Living Radio, Ignite Your Whole Being with Emily Perkins. Tune in every second and fourth Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com as Emily shares the power of living your life with love and loving the life you live. For more information or to listen to past shows, visit LoveLivingHolistics.com. That's LoveLivingHolistics.com. See you next time.